Okay, we're going to go ahead and uh, take a look at simplifying expressions. Uh, we're going to look at adding, subtracting, and uh, multiplying and dividing fractions. Uh, here we're going to just start off by simplifying this first fraction. Most of you know that if you had something like a 15 over a 20, you would not leave it like that. Most of you realize you could take a 5 out of the top and the bottom. It's really a 5 times a 3, and uh, my 3 didn't show up there, sorry about that, over a 5 times a 4, and then in that situation, you could go ahead and cross out your 5s, and you would be then left with your 3 over your 4. Well, we want to go ahead and use that same approach here when we're simplifying fractions. We cannot just cross out the x squared and the x squared, because it's not an x squared times the whole top and an x squared times the whole bottom. Over here we could cross out our 5's top and bottom because they were common factors on the top and the bottom because it was 5 times the whole top, 5 times the whole bottom. So what we need to do is we need to factor the top, factor the bottom, just like we were doing in the last lesson. So we're not going to spend all the time doing the factoring, we'll just get to the factoring and then look at what happens. You'll notice after you factor the top, factor the bottom, you have an x plus 5 that's the same on the top and the bottom. Since it's an x plus 5 times an whole top and an x plus 5 times the whole bottom, you can cross them out. So then you're just left with the first part. You don't really need to have the parentheses around the top or the bottom. And so that's your final answer. You're not able to cross out the 2's because it's not common factors, because it's not 2 times the whole top and 2 times the whole bottom. Similarly with the x's, it's not x times the whole top and to x times the whole bottom. So there's nothing more you can do to simplify that. Well, over here you're dividing fractions. You should realize instead of dividing by a fraction, you want to go ahead and multiply by the reciprocal. You always multiply by the reciprocal, the second fraction, meaning you take the second fraction, flip it upside down, and then you multiply. Now, to be able to simplify this, you want to have everything factored. Just like in our first problem, we factor the top and bottom. So we're going to do that here. Factor the top and bottom of the first fraction, top and bottom of the second fraction. The first fraction, once again, is differences of squares. The second one here at the bottom is just three terms, so you do the unfoiling part. The first one here on the top, you go ahead and pull out your common factor, because remember that's always the first thing you do. And then notice on the bottom you have a common factor of an x, and when you do that, it leaves you with then the sum of cubes. So what's here in the parentheses factors farther yet, and that's what we have right here. Now we want to go ahead and start looking for common factors that we have. You'll notice you have an x minus 3x minus 2 over 3x minus 2, so they cross out. You'll notice also that you have a 3x plus 2 and a 3x plus 2, so that's why we have those crossed out. you also notice what's here at the end of the parentheses and here at the end of the parentheses are the same, so we can cross those out. Also, you have an x squared over an x, so you can cross those out, cross the x out on the bottom, simplify this down to an x to the first here on the top like we have. Another way you can look at this one here is which one has more x is the top or the bottom. The top has one more, so it's an x to the first. So when you look at what's left, you're only left with that x to the first in the top. Here you're only left with the x minus 1 on the bottom. Everything else crosses out, so that's your answer. Once again, you're not able to cross out the x's here because it's not an x times the whole top and an x times the whole bottom. Here we're going to go ahead and subtract fractions. <coughs> you should remember in subtracting fractions, you need to have a common denominator, which in this case we do. So we keep the bottom the same and subtract the top. Some of you might think, oh, well, we're done there. But once again, you want to see it's reduced. Just like our first problem of the day, we did not have that first one reduced. So to see if it's reduced, you've got to factor the top and factor the bottom. Now, here, you can take a minus 5 out. You might be wondering, why did I take a minus 5 versus a 5? 
Well, I knew the bottom factored into differences of squares. And then my x would be in front, and it would have a positive sign in front of it. So I wanted to see if anything would match up with that, so I wanted to have a positive in front of my x. So I had to pull out that negative 5. So now you'll realize that what we have on top, you can add in any order you want, is really this here. So now you can see that you have a common factor of an x minus 3 on the top and the bottom. And uh, I see that that uh, is in the wrong spot. So just as Okay, so you cross out your x minus 3, so it leaves you with a negative 5 on top and an x plus 3 on the bottom. Well, when we look over here, we have a negative exponent. You know a negative exponent just means the reciprocal. So we have this. Well, that's really a fraction minus a fraction, because that's really over 1 there. So a fraction minus a fraction, you'd have to have a common denominator. Well, your common denominator is your x to the fourth. So on my second fraction, if I multiply the bottom by an x to the fourth, remember you can only multiply by special forms of 1, so I'd also have to multiply the top by an x to the fourth. So now I have a 1 minus your x times your x to the fourth, which is an x to the fifth over your common denominator, which is an x to the fourth. Now keep in mind here that we cannot simplify our x's because it's not an x times the whole top here. It is an x times the whole bottom because that's all there is, is just that term. But since it's not a common factor on the top, we cannot simplify that. Well here, once again, just like what we were doing Yesterday, when we have several terms on top over one term on the bottom, which is technically called a monomill, you can go ahead then and put each term on top over your denominator, writing it as separate fractions. Which you should realize that if you're adding or subtracting fractions together, you'd have to have a common denominator, and that's what we have over here on the right-hand side, so then you could write it as one fraction like this. So really, all we did was the reverse process. Well... We're trying to simplify each fraction here. You may want to go ahead and think of your square root of x as an x to the 1 half, and so that's what we're doing here. Now all we want to do is simplify our exponents, top and bottom. Here, which one has more x's, the top or the bottom? So the top does, so we have this. Here, which one has more x's? Well, this is an x to the first right here. That's an x to the 1 half, so the top still has. And here... I'm going to bring that uh, x up as a negative exponent. And so in that part of your homework, that's what your problem or your book is going to be looking for you to do. Well, let's go ahead and look at adding fractions together. You've added fractions together before, but let's look at adding these fractions together without the aid of the calculator. Well, you'd first of all have to find your common denominator which means you'd have to factor each denominator. So we want to look at the prime factorization of the 24. 24 breaks down into a 2 cubed times a 3, so that's why I have that underneath my 7 here. My 18 that I have breaks down into a 2 times a 3 squared, so that's why I have that underneath my 5. Now your least common denominator then, you need to look at all the different things that are occurring between these. So we have a 2, and we have a 3 that shows up. So you know in your common denominator you're going to have a 2 and a 3. And then, if you have a choice in exponents, like here we have a 2 cubed or a 2 to the first, you always want to choose the higher exponent. Or here, a two to, 3 to the first or a 3 squared, choose the higher exponent. So, that's your common denominator. So if this is your common denominator here, we need to get that on the bottom. So to get that, we need another 3 in the bottom. So if you multiply the bottom by 3, you've got to multiply the top by 3. Here, we've got to have another 2 squared on the bottom, so you've got to multiply the top by 2 squared. So you get your common denominator on the top bottom. On top, you get a 21. Here on top, you get a 20 over your common denominator. So you add these together, and that's where the 41 comes from. A lot of times you want to see if it would simplify, but 41 is prime, so it will not simplify. Since we're dealing with just numbers, we'll go ahead and multiply that out.